what is going on? So for early 2020, we have um, a couple new products coming out, and we have a change that has affected the entire lineup. The new products are going to have to wait. It just Sometimes things don't go as planned, and this is one of those times. It might be later this week. It might be next week. I don't know yet. The, the change has already been uh, put in action. It's already happening. There are actually kegs out there with this change already implemented. Um, I will announce that change when I pull this keg out and pressure it up. <laughs> So the most common question I get is, how does a detail keg work? Like, what is it? So they're heavy duty pressurized sprayers. Um, right now they don't play very well with acid, but we are really close to having a chemical resistant keg. But besides acid products, I mean, they're phenomenal. We have a foaming tip, there's a spraying tip. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it just, it helps when it comes to efficiency so much in, in so many ways, it's just, they're nuts, they're incredible. So, when you buy a detail keg, I guess I should say this is a kit. Um, when you buy a detail keg kit, a ready to use kit, show up, this is a two and a half gallon. You open the box, take it out of your, the wrapper. And there is your two and a half gallon detail keg. We'll take the lid off, which is gonna be kind of tricky. Take the handle, move it over, push it in, twist it, and then pull it out. Because they're oval, they're not really circles, so they can, they don't just. Inside the detail keg, you'll find a set of instructions. Find your hose. This specific kit comes with a five foot hose. We have kits, I mean, the hoses in the kits they range from five feet to 200 feet. It just depends on what you're looking for, um, what you need. You'll also find your tip and your, your strainer. This is just the standard spraying tip. Strainer goes inside your sprayer and then you screw tip on. Just like that. Um, there's not a foaming tip in here but it screws on the tip the exact same way. You have your regulator and that's that's it. So, for demonstration purposes, I've already cut and opened the box. You'll take the, the box off your gauge. Take it out of the wrapper. Take whatever air fitting that, that you use. Uh, we don't supply the air fittings. It's just there's too many, too many different options. You'll screw it into the end of your regulator. Tighten it down. And you're ready to go. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, when you're hooking your fittings up, they are directional. The, the black fitting goes, I mean, I guess it is labeled. It says in on one side, out on the other. So, air goes in, liquid comes out. Or, how I always remember it is if you're looking at the logo itself, the hose that you're working with hooks up on the right hand side if you're looking at the logo. So there's two different ways you can operate these things. If you're hooked up to an air compressor or if you're not. If you're hooked up to an air compressor, you can fill it all the way to the top. Um, seal it up, hook up your air, get to work. If you're not going to be hooked up to a compressor, it can be a little tricky. Not too tricky, but just a little. So you need approximately, well, should start over. These don't take CFM to operate. 
they take PSI. That's, that's it. They can be ran off a small pancake compressor, they can be ran off even, even a small compressor like something you would use for uh, train horns on a, on a car, a truck, whatever. Um, so when you're not hooked up to a compressor, you need that, that air volume inside the tank. You need approximately 40% of the max capacity in, of air volume inside. So basically a little bit less than half. So this is a two and a half gallon keg. You can fill approximately a gallon and a half with liquid and that last gallon with air and you're, you're good. You're gonna push everything out. In a, in a five gallon keg, it's three gallons of liquid, two gallons of air. I mean, it's pretty easy. So, go and we'll pressure this up. I mean, you'll, you'll fill it. I don't have anything to fill this with, but you'll fill it up to, to whatever you're working with, either hooked up with air or running it as a standalone unit. Take your lid, seal it up, make sure your relief's tight. If you're hooking it up for the first time, um, I would recommend purging your hose because air compresses or liquid doesn't. So you will lose a lot of pressure per se um, if you have a long hose and you haven't purged it on that first time because there's, there's nothing in your hose. So the liquid comes in, pretty much makes a balloon, um, and it builds up with the rest of the pressure with, with air volume and and drops your pressure down pretty quick. So first time use, purge the hose, get some liquid in here so it can't compress. You hook it up, take your compressor, compressor line, hook it up to your regulator. And then the announcement is that we have changed the process and how our hoses are manufactured, which allows us to bump our max PSI up to 150. It's pretty neat, pretty cool. Um, there's nobody else out there pushing that kind of pressure. So take it, pressure it up. Come on. And I got one, 145. Need to turn my compressor on, but it out. Um, when, when you're going you pressure it up, you need to unhook it from the keg if you're going to be running it as a standalone unit. If you unhook it from here, you're going to take all that pressure and it's going to come right back out. So, and then you can unhook it like a regular air tool. And then at that point, I mean, you're ready to go. Ready to rock and roll. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you watching. Um, like I said, we're super, super stoked about bumping the pressure up to 150. It's, it's going to be standard across the board on all our high-pressure kegs. Um, yeah, the next release is it's just as big. Like I said, hopefully it's later this week. It might be next week. It's still kind of up in the air. But appreciate you watching. Yeah, have a great day.